Uh, that tar dish of the day, very good food punish. Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you are well, wherever you are in the world, or should I say galaxy, is that a thing? Today we're doing another cookbook corner and hopefully this gives away, I've got to take it off, it's itching me already, what the cookbook is. Oh, I quit on the corner. Today's video, I teased it in the last one, we are doing the Doctor Who official cookbook. It's 40 wibbly wobbly timey wimey recipes uh, by a lady called Joanna Farrow, who I believe helped me with one of my cookbooks. Now straight off the bat, I know nothing really about Star Wars. I know about a TARDIS, I know Doctor Who, there's been lots of them. I know Daleks, because I did catch a clip in like the 90s on TV of a Dalek, and I, I, I got so scared I hid behind the sofa. That's the only time I've ever really watched one. So you know the format of this by now, we pick one recipe from the book, do a little overview, see what it tastes like to give us an overall summary, and hopefully if you wish you can go out, if you choose to, and purchase said book. Uh, now we did uh, luckily get away on the last cookbook corner, unfortunately, the day that I was due to put up the video, the actual day, I'd already filmed it in advance, we were going to do a recipe from Coolio's cookbook, who sadly uh, passed away, but I was struggling to uh, pick out one. Um, we will do that, but um, out of respect, I just wanted to say, I'm so glad that I did not put that video up on the day that uh, he was announced that he passed away. That was, I was literally about to put it live. It would have come across such the wrong way, so, uh, we, but we will, because the actual food in there looks amazing. So it's got 40 recipes in it, which isn't that many. And whereas you would sort of, get like at the start like a massive intro. It is literally just this, and then it gets like straight, hello, that's a doctor, isn't it? It looks like Doc Brown. But it goes straight in to like recipes. Oh, that's the cyber thing, isn't it? Whereas the Coca-Cola recipe book was like 20 recipes, and then the other pages were just complete marketing and branding and history of Coca-Cola, which of course is really interesting. This is just completely condensed down with recipes and quite fun stuff too. So here's one, you could do like a cookie canine. I like the look of that, that looked pretty fun. Ah, that's what it is, it's the screwdriver. Look, you can have your own sonic screwdriver with the cucumber. I like that tar dish of the day, very good food punish. Ew, what the heck is that? I very nearly did this today because I think this was on some sort of Christmas special recently that I just saw like a highlight of it on the telly. I didn't see the episode, but I remember seeing this character going, what the heck is that? I don't know what that is, but that's cool. I'm not gonna show you all the recipes in there, but hopefully you'll agree from just looking at that. They come across as fun, so perhaps not as uh, quirky and on the level as the Ninja Turtle cookbook or the Bob's Burgers, which was phenomenal. This is more sort of novelty and just replicating in a nice form Doctor Who nostalgia, which is cool. So I had two things that I was gonna know we're doing. One was a TARDIS cake, which to be fair, looks kind of cool. You've got a rectangular cake with icing and cookies and obviously cake going on inside of it. I was going to mind that over because that is, to me, Doctor Who. When I think of not knowing much about Doctor Who, I think of the TARDIS. But no, hopefully this scene, box falls out of the sky, man falls out of the box, man eats fish custard. Whatever that means. Yes, folks, I have decided to go for homemade fish fingers and custard. Doctor Who tucked into this weird combination of frozen fish. Were they frozen? Ooh. I'm not gonna have them frozen. Fish fingers and ready-made custard. But thankfully in this recipe, a rich cheese sauce takes the place of the custard for dipping your delicious homemade fish fingers. So what I like about this recipe is that it's not just fish fingers from the freezer and, and you know custard just dunked in that. We are gonna make our own homemade fish fingers, which are amazing anyway. Uh, it'll be interesting to see the twist on that. We're gonna make our own homemade cheesy custard sauce. But of course, I have tried fish fingers and custard in the past a long time ago, and I really liked that combination. It's actually not too bad. So we will do that. We have got some custard. We will try that absolutely. The reason I opted for that cookbook is when I've been saying, hey, if you've seen any cool cookbooks, send me a link. When you guys sent me the Doctor Who one, they're like, you must do the custard fish fingers. So I had to uh, do that. And there's uh, someone that was very kindly sent me this cookbook uh, two days after this one arrived, after I ordered it myself. So I've already signed it and returned it back to you. So hopefully it doesn't freak you out, but um, thank you, that was very kind. And of course, any cool cookbooks do keep the ideas coming. But first up, let's get some fish fingers going. Now, fish fingers in the UK are like proper nostalgia. I really, sometimes you'd have it like fish fingers, baked beans and chips. Midweek dinner, Saturday afternoon tea watching Gladiators on the telly. 
amazing. But as strange as this seems for some people, this is a fish finger. If you um, are from a different country, you might be like, what the heck is a fish finger? It's literally a piece of breaded cod and it's simplicity at its best. Uh, we're just gonna grill these later on. So we will actually try authentic ones just for comparison, but we're gonna make our own, which might look slightly different. Okay, so what we've got here, I've actually got two of these, but I'll just show you one. This is a cod fillet, which has just got Boston out of his bed, brilliant. Every time, mate, I'm not gonna pan to you. And you know, I know what you're doing, I know your games. So this is like a chunky piece of fish, which is actually used oftenly when you get fish and chips in the UK, it's, it's cod. This is skinless and boneless. And you can kind of like make a mega fish finger out of that if you want. But we're gonna just take some nice little strips like this. Yeah, so that was two uh, fillets from my fishmonger. I went to the fishmonger for that. Uh, that was £3.50, uh, which if I watch this back historically in a few years, I'd be like, that's quite cheap. But that is quite a lot of money, which is why you find that fish fingers aren't necessarily as cheap as they used to be. If you want the proper cod ones, they're quite expensive. So you tend to find that the budget ones use like a combination of fish. It's like, it's still fish, but it's like more of a, a medley. Let's just put it that way. I'm not going any further with that, but you probably know where this is going. Season this up with a bit of salt. You'd think it'd be salty enough, wouldn't you, having come from the sea, but hey ho. So just following their recipe, but I do like uh, cracked pepper. So we are gonna fry uh, these fish fingers, although you could air fry them, you could probably bake them and grill them as well, but I quite like using fryer tuck, which is the name that we were probably gonna name our 10 pound fryer that we got from Audi. So obviously we dredge that. We have got some flour, which I would normally season, it's telling me not to, but I guess we season the fish. We've got some egg, uh, and then you use breadcrumbs. And traditionally, I would normally use some panko or some golden ones like this, okay? That's, hope that, you know, that would give it the color similar to the ones you get in the supermarket, but the recipe tells me to use fresh breadcrumbs. So bread whizzed up, which I guess is what breadcrumbs should be. What, I mean, what is this? Mm. Fortified wheat flour, calcium carbonate, iron, paprika extract. It might just be me, but um, <laughs> I feel like they look, might make it look a bit more fluffy, more like a chicken. Do you know what I mean? Because the ones I buy normally are much more dried and firmer, like a seasoning. Let's dredge. We'll do one piece together like this. So uh, the fish, uh, which I was gonna pat it dry with a kitchen towel, but obviously the flour uh, will do that roll. So we can just use one hand to be sort of dry. That's gonna, well, I think it's gonna encase the seasoning on there. Hopefully it will. Bring in the beaten egg. Drop that just before your uh, dry hand touches it. Otherwise that'll get very sticky. And then use a wet hand to roll that around. Place it in the breadcrumb, bring your dry hand back in that had the flour on. And first of all, just let it, yeah. <laughs> this is what I thought. It looks more like a chicken, but I love it. <laughs> I love it. Why the heck not? Look at that, amazing. And of course, if you wanted to, you could dunk that in the egg again and then re-put some more breadcrumbs on it. I think I'm fairly happy with that, to be honest. So that's what I'm gonna be doing uh, with my other six or so pieces of fish. I'll see you in a bit. All right, so that is them done. You might be able to spot, there's a couple that I decided to do that double dunk of egg and then some more breadcrumbs. It does look a little bit like desiccated coconut around there rather than bread, but I'm really excited to see what these turn out like. I feel like we've got to stay true to the recipe in the book. So we'll leave these to one side and get the oil ready when we need to but let's make the custard that's not a custard, it's a cheese sauce, which is, still sounds quite good. So we're basically doing um, a fairly standard uh, cheesy sauce, really. We've got some flour, butter, 15 grams of flour, so equal parts. We'll melt this up first of all, push the butter around, cling onto the flour, and form like a little paste that we can kind of whisk together, but this only needs to be done for like about 90 seconds to a minute. So now we've got 300 mils of milk, and we're gonna whisk that in in about two or three batches, okay? I will say though, we've got to add the cheese. It is looking very pale right now. It doesn't look like custard, but it will be nice. But I do think for that authenticity, you should possibly look at using the custard, but we'll work that out at the end. I've done homemade custard here on the channel a few times, and it isn't too much trouble to make, to be honest. Or of course, you could just buy some from the shop. So thickening this up. Ooh, did I just blow out the candles on my gas hob? Ooh, don't do that. All right, so this is where I think it's gonna start looking more custardy. We've got some uh, grated cheddar cheese, some turmeric, so that's some, hopefully, a little bit of food dye for it, and some flavor. And for some real spank, uh, we have got some 
Dijon mustard. Again, slightly yellow in colour, so hopefully all this together, not only is it going to make it a delicious cheese sauce, it should dye it a little bit. Oh yeah, oh my gosh, I think it's actually changing, look at that. <laughs> That's awesome! Oh my gosh! Right, um, well I can keep that warm if I need to. That, oh, I've got to try it, haven't I? It's going to be really hot. Mmm! Oh, that is nice! Do you know what? I'm going to keep this warm. I <laughs> Look how neon that is! That's amazing! I've just preheated my oven because I'm going to do the standard fish fingers, but I have to ask you, what would you prefer? These, I mean, classic nostalgia UK person, I think they're going to be like, yes, 100%. Store-bought fish fingers like this, or our slightly gourmet fresh breaded ones. They're definitely more chunky and you know what fish is going in there. So I'm going to bake them up and then these are going to get fried. So it's going to be really interesting to compare. And of course, yes, we will do it with normal custard, but I don't think it's going to look as vibrant as that. That looks like proper food dye. Fish fingers are 2% tastier on Barry Lewis baking mats. About 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, thank you to everyone that's buying the mats, by the way. I'm restocking them regularly on the UK and US Amazon, but they will ship to you wherever you are in the world. Nice! Right, this oil's hot. Let's fry the fresh bread ones. Oh yeah. So we're gonna fry them until uh, the breadcrumb coating uh, is a nice color, hopefully nice and consistent, but um, we'll see what happens there. But more importantly, we wanna cook through that fish. So ideally about four to five minutes in there. Look at that color. That is amazing. That compared to that has gone way better than I thought. Blimey. Right, I just wanted to show you, this is standard dessert custard, and this is our homemade cheesy custard. Is it me or does that look more like custard than this <laughs> actual custard? I don't know. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, I love it. You get like the bubbling fish fingers. You see that one there? Oh, that is hot. All right, wait for this little batch to fry and we'll taste them all. The one thing I will say about this sauce, I just did a little thumbnail, took some photos, it cools down rapidly. So uh, just warming it back up in the microwave. Uh, to be fair, I think I might have uh, warmed that a bit too much. <laughs> I am going to go old school first. We're going to get the retro fish finger. It's pretty good. Mm. These are the cod ones. So these were slightly more expensive than the um, fish paste ones. We will try it in our cheesy mustard custard. Mmm. Well, oh, that's really good. Despite the neonness, it's so bright. But we will show you. Classic custard. This is one thing. Can you answer me? In Doctor Who, was it actually a frozen fish finger? Though I don't understand. Here we go. It's fine. It's actually because fish is so mild. I know it's kind of like a bit like. Oh, so disgusting. I have had some very strange weird food combinations over the years, as you know. And that is delicate. It sort of it sort of works. It makes the fish a little sweet. Maybe fish and chip shops in the UK should start doing it as a bit of a No, they shouldn't. But it is not the most hideous thing. So our homemade fish fingers. I'm gonna take one bite on its own. Mmm. Oh wow. Can you see? Oh, the crunch is great. But you've got, in the middle there, proper flakes of fish. Like, real chunks of it, which you don't even get in these ones. Oh. So, the mustard custard, which is what we're definitely going to call it. Mmm. Mmm. This recipe, and which is the whole point of this playlist, is actually incredible. Making your own fish fingers is fun, you can do it in the air fryer, you can do it in the oven, you can grill it, you can pan fry it, you can do it so many different ways, but I just wanted to fry it and just test that crispiness with those fresh breadcrumbs, and I am not disappointed. It's blooming awesome, and I think you'll love it. So as for the book, I've got to give it my bear of approval. Not only because I know Joanna, all right? She's a lovely lady, but the book itself, if you're a Doctor Who fan, it's not gonna blow you away with like gourmet recipes and things, but for nostalgia and actual food that tastes good, and if you're doing a Doctor Who themed party or something like that, I think you'll love it. So, that's my thoughts. Let's see what Mrs. B thinks. Fish fingers and custard, that classic Doctor Who, and you know we like Doctor Who in this house. I think we probably would, we just haven't watched it, have we? The girls have watched more than us. Have they? Yeah. Oh, come on, you've got to go more than that. Yes. 
Good girl. She's my, that's my wife, you know, for the team. It works. It's bad. Yeah. It's like that sweet and savoury combination. If you don't mind that, then that's okay. The custard overtakes the fish. Yeah, it makes it sweet. Do you find that? Yeah. And because there's no saltiness in it, I think that's why, it if it was a really salty thing, it'd be like, ooh. But I think it just smothers it. Mm. Okay. It's not bad, is it? No? I wouldn't necessarily have that on my side with my fish fingers and chips. <laughs> okay. All right, just take a little bite from that first. Oh, the noise. Oh. Yeah? That's like a proper fish finger with chunky fish in it. Yeah. That's good. All right, okay, so, so try, try the uh, mustard custard. That's nice. Yeah? Yeah, I like it. Now should I dip it in the other custard? Yeah. Look oh. what oh, she's doing, Boston. She's putting it in custard. Good boy. No? No. I prefer these fish fingers dipped in that custard. <laughs> but no. So did Doctor Who, I think. No, with that custard I prefer these, but these are very nice with this. Okay. But I think the real winner here is that book, and I genuinely, we have had far worse. I would say we probably had one or two that I prefer more for the variety of recipes in there. But if you are a Doctor Who fan, I think you would love it. Mm -hmm. I genuinely do. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use our sonic screwdriver, whatever it is, and say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out the rest of the Cookbook Corner recipes. Subscribe if you're not already. If you are, make sure your notifications are turned on. And let me know any cool cookbooks you've seen. Fish fingers and custard for lunch. Fish finger sandwich? Oh, that's what we had on our wedding day. <laughs> well, everyone else did. <laughs> yeah. See you later, mate. Cheers, guys. Look at that! You can peel it off. Mmm. Nice. But if you warm it up, it goes into your arteries much nicer. <laughs>